everyone around you is like stressing about homeschool and you're like, my kid is three or younger or maybe has a developmental delay and is like they're three or younger. And you're like, for me, homeschool doesn't even cut it. But you don't want this time to go to waste. You're willing to do whatever it takes for your kid, but you don't have the training. You've come to the right place. My name is Julie Meyer, and I happen to know that you as a parent have powers far greater than any of us therapists or educators can ever have. Keep watching. Good morning. This is Julie Meyerowitz, and I am back again to share with you a way to practice what we just learned in our last video, um, a way to communicate with our children, a way to practice communication with our children that invites connection, increases cognition, and improves meaningful communication um, between us and our children. And you're going to see um, a way to practice that. Just as a quick review, in our last video, we talked about inquisitive language or quizzing, asking questions, imperative language or commanding or demanding, um, giving um, direct commands and orders to our children, as opposed to declarative language, just commenting in our communication with them. Um, and we talked about how increasing our declarative language and, and decreasing, increasing declarative language and decreasing um, this quizzing and commanding could help invite more connection, um, help improve um, cognition by inviting our children to come up with their own responses as opposed to avoiding or stressing out about giving us the response that they think we want or may, we might actually want when we're giving questions and commands. Um, and I'm going to show you a simple activity. It's great if you could start incorporating this into everyday communication, but if we've been overly relying on these types of communication, which is very common when we're stressed about um, our children's development or our own circumstances outside of our lives with them, or in this case, um, a lot of us are, sh even those of us who are, are aware of these distinctions, are shifting a lot um, back into this quizzing and commanding when we're stressed about the general situation of our lives and what's going on in the world. So this is a quick, a quick refresher for those of us who know this already and an introduction. Uh, I know for many of us this is new. And again, like it's great if you could do this in our everyday lives, but for especially for those of us who, for whom it's new, um, it's unfamiliar. And so what I like to recommend with the families that I work with is that we practice it in a short storybook activity a lot of times at the end of the day um, that we already have that built-in cozy time with our children. And this is a different way to share a book than we're probably used to. A lot of us probably read the book, which is <laughs> not an unreasonable thing to do, but I'd like to invite you to practice our um, just declarative language. This is an opportunity to just um, practice declarative language and um, during that cozy story time with our kids. And as we get more comfortable with it, maybe even find ways to incorporate it in our daily interactions with our, our little ones. So um, I have here, familiar book that you might have this very book at home or you might remember it from when you were younger. I actually carry this with me and it reminds me of a book that I had in my home when I was little. And this is The Little Engine That Could. Um, it has beautiful pictures and lots of things to talk about on its beautiful pages. Now I will say just a quick caveat. Um, when I am working with um, young or older children or adults with delays that um, tend to fixate on letters and words. As much as I can, I try to find wordless picture books. I was doing this activity with a little girl who was hyperlexic. She wasn't communicating meaningfully so much yet, but she was very interested, which is also good in the letters and the words, but she was missing the point of what was going on. So I shifted with her to uh, books without pictures for a while before I went back, I mean, uh, books without words and only pictures for a while before shifting back to these words, uh, to these books with words. So let me just give a quick example. Quizzing might be, what's that? What color is it? How many milk bottles are there? And for a lot of kids and a lot of adults, that's just going to shut people down. 
um, commanding might be, show me the elephant. Where is the train? Point to the clown. And again, that kind of language shuts a lot of people down and um, they might even run away from the book activity. And if that's, if reading a book has been a struggle, they might continue to, so it might be just that you get in a couple pages um, before they run away from you. But if you keep practicing this, you might see that your child um, or, yeah, or an adult with a developmental delay in this developmental range of three years-ish or younger, um, might stay with you longer than they used to. And uh, you might hear some words that you didn't hear before coming from their mouths. Um, but even just the staying with you um, and, and looking at you, they might stay with you and start to point because they want to hear your comments, which is a good uh, sign that they're paying attention to what you're saying. So let's practice some declarative language, some just commenting on these pages. A train. Smoke. Elephant. Clown. Monkey. I wonder what's next. Yummy. Ice cream. Mmm. Peppermints. Peach. Sad dream. Elephant. pointing another train so I'm not gonna do the entire book right now um, we might come back to this book with a later video um, how to develop this further but um, the other thing that you might have noticed is that my comments were very brief so a lot of times if the child is not speaking yet or not yet putting words together we want to meet them where they are um, so using just one or two word phrases and making these comments is going to be just a step of, ahead of where they are. And then when they start making more regularly their one or two words, you could start increasing your comments to two or three words. And um, you could practice that with a storybook or anything with pictures. You could use it with a family photo album. And I think you'll see that this is a way to start transforming how you interact with your child. That very likely will lead to um, you seeing some, some improvement in how they're interacting with you. So this has been Julie Meyerowitz, and thank you very much, and I hope this is helpful for you. Take care. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please click like and share with anybody you think can benefit from it. For more videos like this, please subscribe. To request a video on a topic that we haven't covered yet, um, go ahead and leave a comment down below, and I'll see that. And if I get enough interest, I'll make a new video. Also, you don't have to do this alone. Um, you could join our, you could join the discussion in our private Facebook group, and the link is in the comment box down below. Or if you're interested in working with me personally, send me a PM on Facebook, and we'll make a time to talk. In the meantime, use your powers and take care.